Hey, how you doing? Justin here. I'm in Los Angeles, USA at the moment, and I'm catching up with a great guitar player, Pete Thorne. Uh, I first saw a video of his, of him playing Eruption a few years ago. It blew my mind that somebody could do it so accurately. It was, it was pretty special. And uh, so I've asked to catch up with him. He does loads of cool things. He's playing with Melissa Etheridge. You might have seen him on tour with her. Uh, loads of other great guys as well. And he also does great gear demos and guitar lessons on his YouTube channel. And uh, how you doing? I'm great. It's uh, nice to meet you finally. I've, yeah. I've been familiar with your YouTube channel for some time now, and it's uh, it's impressive. I like what you do. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Great lessons, and I like that you're also um, active in uh, different causes and stuff that you believe in. I think yeah. that's really cool. Oh, so, thanks, man. Yeah. Um, now, some of you may have seen already, if you're on the ball, uh, Pete's got a new studio, which we're in at the moment, which I must say is like a guitar porno room. It's just full of really cool stuff, and it's possibly the nicest guitar tracking setup that I've ever seen. He's got all of his amp heads over here and a oh, great thing here and a, and, a, and, a, and a live room up the back. So we thought it'd be a, a kind of a fun video to take you through uh, what he's got going on. So shall we have a look? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sounds good. You're about to do a track on your own record and you've picked your Sir Stratocaster as being your guitar. Where, where does it go from here? How are you going to kind of run through all of your, this setup? Okay, well essentially um, in building the studio, what I wanted to do was make it as quick and easy and painless as possible to be able to, uh, you know, pick a guitar, pick some effects, and maybe an amp head, patch it into a cabinet, and be recording in as little time as possible. So I'll kind of walk you through that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, basically, I'm I'm uh, I'm coming out of the guitar into a little pedal board over here that we'll take a look at in a second, and then I'm coming out of the pedal board into. Uh, but right now, I happen to be playing through this RSA 31 divided by 13 amp. And uh, so it's essentially, you know, what I'm what I'm thinking is just guitar, patch it into a into a pedal board that uh, that has some nice pedals on it. So in case I get inspired and want to get it, you know, some effects happening or something, I can do that quickly and easily. And then, you know, which amp do I want? And I want to make that real real easy and quick. And with the patching system that I've got for the heads, uh, it becomes really quick and painless to just kind of pick an amp, patch it into a speaker tie line, got the cabs out in the other room, and, and away I go. That's super cool, man. Yeah. So, let's, so, should we have a look at your board? Yeah, let's take a look at the pedal board here and talk about that for a second. Okay, so this is my uh, my board that I use for uh, uh, sessions and uh, smaller gigs and fly dates and things like that. And it's a really cool little board. There's a lot of a lot of stuff stuff on it. It's essentially um, I've got a TC Poly tune that the uh, Grace uh, compressor from uh, Seven Sisters. It's an old original MXR Phase 90. An Abenai 2, which is a TS style uh, type overdrive, like into TS 808 style. Uh, the Carl Martin Plexitone, which I helped, I helped those guys voice, and I love that pedal. Um, uh, Strymon Flint, uh, which is a reverb trim. The El Capstan, which is a uh, delay. And uh, I've, I've got a TC flashback on there as well for some alternate delay. And last but certainly not least, the Sur Coca Boost which is a clean boost and mid boost in one pedal. I love the trend of dual pedals these days where there's like two sounds in one pedal. It's super cool. Um, so got a few of those on there for sure. So uh, when I'm coming up with a guitar sound, uh, if it's anything from clean up to say moderately gritty, I've got no problem running all the effects in front of the amp. So, um, you know, you can run delays and reverbs in front of an amp that's even, you know, crunching up just a little bit and it's cool. Um, but as we all know, if you try and run, uh, if you ever tried it, if you try and run delay and reverb into an amp that's getting pretty dirty, it can get rather sloppy sounding. So uh, one thing I designed this board to be able to do is uh, separate this pedal, the, the El Capstan delay, and the flint, which is a reverb and tremolo, uh, away from the others if I want to. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's an output on the side of the board here, and if I come out of that output right into the front of the amp, uh, I'm running everything in line, so all the pedals are just in line in series right into the front of the amp. There's another jack up here on this custom box I've got, and if I come out of there, run into an amp like, say, my PT100 amp from Custom Audio, which has an effects loop, I can come out of the top jack, and it'll then I won't be running through these two pedals. It'll run through all the pedals, and this flashback delay will be the last one in line. Go out to the amp, take the effects send from the amp, and I'll come back into the pedal board, and that'll send me into the input of the flint. And then that'll go to the El Capstan. Output of the El Capstan will come back out the side of the board here and go to the effects return of the amp. So it's an innovative switching kind of uh, box that Dave Friedman from Rack Systems designed for me. Uh, it's very cool. So I can use the board with delay and reverb in the loop if I want, or I can just patch everything in front of an amp. <laughs> and, That's uh, nice. 
Yeah, so this little board's great for recording. I mean, if I, if I want to plug in some little inspiration, you know, you know, board, get a little tremolo, a little reverb, a little delay, some different overdrive colors, the phaser, the compressor, it's all there. And uh, so that's that, you know. Uh, beyond that, then, you're going to pick an amp, right? So uh, we should talk about talk about the amps. Um, what I tried to come up with was um, basically a good cross-section of different heads uh, with all different kinds of tones, you know, everything from clean all the way to really modded distortion madness. And... So what I've got here, uh, with the, uh, the Sir Badger 30, I think of it as being like a great um, sort of all across the board amp. It, it can sound great clean, it can sound great, you know, doing, doing its dirty thing as well, and it's kind of a Brit flavored in, in its general character. So that's a great amp, and it works well because of the internal power scaling at any volume. Um, the basement, that's my clean uh, platform. Sounds great when I grind it up too and get it dirty, but I more tend to set it clean and then if I want to hit it with a fuzz or an overdrive pedal or something, it's great for that. Um, Jim Kelly amp here is fantastic. Uh, uh, it sounds like a uh, you know great big giant beautiful Fender, like the best Fender-y you know, American style clean that I've ever heard. And then when you grind it up, it gets like, extremely complex. I mean, guys like Joe Bonamassa are using it and whatnot. It has this beautiful blues tone or blues rock kind of thing happening all its own and one of the best reverbs I've ever heard in an amp. Um, the uh, divided by 13 uh, RSA 31 that I've got sitting here that's my AC30 style amp so if I want to get the, some of that EL84 chimey thing going it's fantastic. Uh, the Sur uh, SL68 that does my Marshall Plexi type thing really well uh, so if I want to get a grindy Marshall kind of thing or you know it, it sounds great clean as well and then I've got the Friedman BE100 down there on the bottom, which does modded Marshall Madness. And, uh, you know, so all the way up to from clean to, to chime EL34 to, you know, screaming high gain stuff I can get there. And then, of course, I've got my generally my PT100 amp in here as well. It's my signature amp from Sir. I mentioned in the other video they're on their way to gigs right now, so I don't have one of those heads here in the studio. I wish I did, but, um, but it's, it's a fantastic channel switcher with a Fendery clean and a uh, modded sort of Brit flavor on uh, channel two and three. So, you know, cross-section of different amps and whatnot, and, uh, you know, just pick the one for whatever tone you hear in your head, basically. Um, I also, uh, I've got a couple of attenuators here, which we talked about in the last video. I like using those to kind of not only keep a lid on the volume, but they'll protect your speakers. Um, I've got a lot of 112 cabinets and 212s, and they have, you know, lower, I, I'm kind of a fan of lower wattage Brit uh, flavored speakers. And you know, it's plugging a hundred watt head into them, especially when the cabs are way over in another room. Uh, it becomes real easy to drive a cab maybe a little bit too hard, and you can blow speakers real easy. So I've generally always got an attenuator of some sort patched in line, and uh, there, there's just a little bit of added extra protection. Attenuators are so good these days, and they're so transparent. I feel like you don't need to to worry about them affecting your tone really. So, so that's that. So uh, I'll pick a head and then I can use my, my patching system up here on the top to patch whatever head I want into a speaker tie line. That'll send us out to the live room and we can, uh, we can run out there and look at cabinets or talking about that. This is the live room. This is where I've got guitar cabs and whatnot. Um, so it's fantastic. This is a big deal for me because I used to record in a closet. So now I've got some, <laughs> some ability to actually record cabs and whatnot. And so, cool. So yeah. what do we got there? That's, uh, is that a... No, it's I don't even really know cool what that first is. that I actually haven't had a chance to use very much. Um, my friend Gene that uh, owns Ultrasound Rehearsal in New York. Um, he's yeah. A, he's a really cool guy. That's where I just um, did all my last clinics was in Ultrasound. That's oh, is that funny. right? Yeah, 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 Gene's fantastic. He's great. Yeah. He, he actually sent me this cab. He said, I want to give this to you. And, uh, and so I said, of course, it's a 412 with four Celestian Blues. And hmm. it's open back. So you can imagine, like, for a boxy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really killer. Kind of a small hmm. size 412. It's a unique cab. So hmm. thank you, Gene. That's really cool. Cool. Um, then I've got a bunch of different 112s loaded. I used to, you know, in my old studio, it was like all I could do was 112s in a closet. That's all I had space for. So I accumulated some 112s. And I, I still love recording with them because they sound really tight. And, you know, they don't, you don't necessarily need a 412 all the time to get a great big guitar sound on tape. So, um, and that looks like a badger to me. Yeah, this is, is like it? a, it's actually a Sir Badger cab. This has a Celestian cream back in it that I've been checking out. So that's really cool. Cool. This is a, uh, this is a Sir 212 um, that I use on tour with Melissa. It's like an oval back 212. Uh -huh. And it's got a really great sound. Right now it's got a uh, Celestian Lynch back and a uh, Scumback um, PVC model H30, uh, sorry, H75 he calls them. Hmm. So it's a, it's a really cool cab. 
Yeah. Um, over there, I got a couple four twelves. One's uh, got uh, green backs in it, and the other one's got V thirties in it. The Randall cap's got V thirties, so I've got that color if I want. I think cool. what I'm going to do is actually do a uh, recording four twelve that has four different speakers in it. So I'll do a green back style, an H thirty style, a V thirty, and then maybe something else. And then I'll be able to just kind of have one 412 and can move the mics around. Hmm. That's my next kind of thing I'm thinking. Um, next project. The, this is actually the old cabinet. This is what I use for everything you've heard me do on YouTube. <laughs> this <laughs> hey. little guy right here. Wow. And I also recorded my whole record through this thing. So it's a hmm. Wagner. And uh, it currently has a Weber Legacy in it, for, um, which is essentially the, uh, like a Scumback M75. Um, Weber made those speakers... Uh, for a long time, and now uh, Jim from Scumbag makes them himself, but it's essentially the same spec. This has, this has a Weber one in it right now. I, th I thought my old, uh, the, the speaker that was in here was maybe getting a little beat up. I'm not even sure, but I was just thinking, does it sound the same as it used to? And I happen to have this Weber speaker, speaker which sounds great. It sounds like, you know, hmm. the, the, the Scumbag did when it was new, essentially. So Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's that's how you, you don't, you don't really need a big cabinet to get big guitar sounds. These little, little 112s will sound killer. And yep. uh, so Bogner makes that. Um, and now this interesting yeah, let's check this thing out. in the corner. The reason I got this is because uh, this comes from a company called Clear Sonic. And the reason I got it is because there's other studios in this building. And uh, there's actually a guy that has a studio on the other side of it. The, there's a, a thick double wall glass window over there that's behind those shutters. And it's looking through on another studio that's not mine. So I was, you know, a little bit worried about during the day if I'm in here tracking and stuff that even though there's a double wall there and stuff that I might be bothering the fellow that works in there and whatnot. So um, what I decided to do was I hit up Clear Sonic and said, hey, can you help me? And they said, absolutely. They're, they make the uh, plexiglass panels that you see here with also the absorption material on the inside that they call sorber panels. And uh, so this thing, you can kind of configure it any way you want, and it'll surround a cabinet as big as a, a 412. They call it the amp pack. And this is the Ampac 31 model. So I've got a little Sur 112 sitting in there all mic'd up right now. And uh, this thing is amazing. It, it really will cut the volume of your cabinet down like in half. So I, when I first got it, I set it up in this room. And uh, with my Sur Badger 30 amp, you know, it's a good loud 30 watt amp. I had it plugged in and I surrounded the cab and uh, closed off the top. And I could talk just like I am right now and have a conversation with somebody else uh, while the guitar is blaring away. So... Pretty amazing. Um, so if you've got a home studio or something you need to control volume, I think this is a fantastic solution. And it really doesn't change the sound. It, it changes the, the, the top end maybe ever so slightly, but it's totally acceptable what it does to the sound. It's, I've been recording for years with a cabinet surrounded by soft stuff in a closet in my, you know, my old apartment. So it's like this is a you know, much better version of essentially the same, the same scenario. And you can do it and still get great guitar tones. Um, hmm. So I'm a big fan of this clear sonic baffle. So essentially you do this with it, just close it up like that, and then you can, you know, close the top to any degree that you like. Even like this, and the volume of your amp is cut down by like about half. It's pretty hmm. cool stuff. That's super cool. Yeah. So that's it essentially. I've got a patch panel over here. The panel's still being wired, but essentially I've got eight mic tie lines into my, uh, into my, uh, my studio control room, two headphone sends into here in case I want to cut vocals or something in here with a singer and then there's two speaker tie lines so I can record you know be blaring away through two cabinets in here and, um, that's awesome dude yeah so this is my uh, this is my new zone well thanks a lot for showing me around your studio man it is properly awesome uh, any of you guys that want to see more stuff from Pete you can go to peterthorn.com uh, you can check him out on YouTube at S-I-N-A-S-L-1. So it's youtube.com YouTube slash S-I-N-A-S-L-1. What does that mean? People always ask me. Stranger in a strange land. And, okay. Uh, then I had to put a one after it. Of yeah, course, yeah. Somebody, somebody else had already got the first one. I hate that. <laughs> uh, and also on Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash guitar nerd, right? That's correct. Guitar yeah. nerd is also the name of Peach Record. If you haven't got it, it's definitely worth checking out. It's a super duper rock guitar record, that one. I really enjoy it. Thank you. So uh, we're going to do a part two now, and uh, you can check out some of the stuff of actually Pete using the gear and how he uses it to record his guitar. So uh, make sure you stay tuned for that. That'll be on Pete's YouTube channel. So uh, we'll catch you very soon. All right. Take care. Thank you, Justin. Bye-bye. You're welcome, man.